I made this solar collector a year ago, and you may mistakenly think that it is a cheap copy of these very expensive solar collectors which have this dark metal sheet to absorb solar radiation and convert it into heat, and the thermal conductivity of the metal sheet carries the heat to these copper pipes for a liquid that takes the heat. This cheap solar collector was made by me according to a different design, and this thin steel sheet is heated by the sun and gives the heat to water which will move along these holes within a similar polymer sleeve. And we understand that such cheap polymer sleeves replace those expensive copper pipes which require laborious connection of the pipes with each other and with the dark copper or aluminum sheet, and these facts affect the profitability of such large solar stations designed to produce a huge amount of heat which should be cheaper than heat from natural gas or other traditional energy sources. We may notice that the weight of the water presses well those polymer sleeves to the inner surface of the hot steel sheet, and therefore it transfers the heat very well to the water, and this video will show these results of my measurements of the energy parameters of my solar collector. This is one of my experiments. And the water of this tank is moved by this pump to the inlet of the solar collector. And now each of the five polymer sleeves has a separate outlet because I wanted to be sure that the water flow through each of the five sleeves is about the same. Now I am showing how this solar collector has heated 42 liters of water of the tank from a temperature of 17 degrees to 65 degrees Celsius for three hours. So. Let's compare the cost and energy capabilities of this solar collector with these expensive collectors. These are my costs of materials for the collector, and we can calculate that it is about $12 per square meter, and this is approximately 10 times cheaper than these flat plate solar collectors. However we understand that these costs do not take into account the salaries of workers, and this is the minimum version of the collector. Similar to the way the minimal version of Tesla Model 3 has a price of $35,000, but we know that usually Model 3 sells for $40,000, $50,000 or more thousand dollars, and the minimum version of our solar collector is the following. We see that the body of my solar collector consists of expanded polystyrene and wooden battens, however I think that many of you may offer a large number of other versions of the collector body with mineral wool and metal or polymer sheets or thin sheets of wood based. In addition, this thin steel sheet of the minimum version is coated with cheap black paint and not with a selective coating. These upper and lower walls of the minimum version of my collector are wooden boards with primitive fixation on the collector body. And these are sheets of ordinary cheap glass, and their primitive fixation and sealing of their joints will be described at the end of this video. These wooden parts fix the collector on the ground, however we understand that more expensive versions of the collector can replace these wooden stakes with more reliable structures based on concrete or steel. Now I am showing the construction of a large solar station with expensive flat plate solar collectors, and this is the work of the Danish company Arken Sunmark which constructs solar stations is radically cheaper than its competitors, and therefore this company is the world leader and it constructed almost all the large solar thermal stations, including this station to produce heat for a copper plant in Chile and this station for district heating of the Danish city of Silkborg. We see workers installing large solar collectors on small steel columns, and then adjacent collectors connect with each other, and the edges of a collector row are connected to large pipes for heat transfer agent. So, this is just one section and we must have many such sections which form a long roll like these collector rows. The installation of these stakes is the initial stage of construction of our collector row, and then we install these bodies of the sections with the black sheets. After that, we pull long polymer sleeves through entire row of our collectors, and then we have to connect the edges of the sleeves with the water inlets and outlets. And the construction of our collector row ends with installation of similar rectangles of glass sheets. I once tested heat production of this minimum version of my solar collector, 
and this is the results of my measurements of its energy parameters, although my calculations for its heat production use these degraded parameters which take into account the impact of dirt, snow and aging of the collector, and one of my old videos described how these energy parameters are used to predict the thermal capacity of a solar collector and its heat production. Obviously, our parameters are noticeably worse than these energy parameters of expensive flat plate solar collectors, but I remind you that this is just the minimal version of our collector, and we can remember three technical solutions which give expensive solar collectors higher energy parameters, and it is obvious that we can add these three solutions to the design of our collector. Firstly, we can coat this steel sheet not with a cheap black paint but with a selective coating the same as that of expensive solar collectors. Secondly, we can use special glass cover of expensive collectors instead of our cheap glass. Thirdly, we can use more efficient thermal insulation of the upper and lower walls of our collector and more efficient sealing of the airspace between the glass and the steel sheet than I will describe in a few minutes. If we use those three technical solutions, our solar collector has a slightly higher efficiency than expensive flat plate solar collectors because our water takes heat from almost the entire surface of the dark sheet, and therefore our efficiency does not depend on the thermal conductivity of the sheet, as was the case of expensive collectors. Let's look at the cost of heat which is produced by the minimum version of my solar collector. And this table describes the annual heat production from one square meter of the collector and the cost of its heat for different temperatures in the United States, Europe, and India, and I calculated the cost of the heat on the basis of this cost of capital and labor. These are the cases when the cost of our solar heat is approximately one and a half times cheaper than the cost of heat from natural gas, and we see that they correspond to the water temperatures of 75 or 95 degrees Celsius. However a decrease in the water temperature significantly increases the annual production of our heat, and therefore its cost decreases, and these are the cases when our solar heat is about 6 times cheaper than heat from natural gas. I remind you that these results correspond to the minimum version of my solar collector, and perhaps you will be able to change the design of the collector so that the cost of heat will decrease due to a more optimal compromise between the annual heat production of the collector its construction cost and its lifespan. This is an example of calculating the cost of our heat, but it is obvious that it will be true if our spending money and time reaches these targets. We can notice that I have already increased the cost of materials for the collector because later I will recommend the use of more expensive polymer sleeves. This target will be mentioned at the end of this video. This is one of my experiments. And we can notice that now the water does not circulate through my solar collector, but I filled those sleeves of the collector with about 15 liters of water this morning, and we see that the sun has already heated the water to about 95 degrees Celsius, and now the ambient temperature is 3 degrees Celsius above zero, and shadows tell us that now the sun's rays fall on the plane of the collector at an angle of about 20 degrees because the noon was more than an hour ago. So. Now the heating of the water has stopped, and this phenomenon is called stagnation of a solar collector, and those 95 degrees are not dangerous for materials of my collector, however now I am showing you the results of other tests of stagnation of my solar collector, and these two polyethylene sleeves more than a dozen times have been at a stagnation temperature greater than 100 degrees Celsius when the sleeves were not filled with water. We see that the high temperature melted polyethylene of the sleeves, and they stuck to the hot steel sheet, and it is clear to everyone that further operation of these two sleeves is impossible, however I remind you that these sleeves are made of low density polyethylene with a melting point of about 110 degrees Celsius, but high density polyethylene, polypropylene, mylar, rubber, teflon and many other polymers have a higher melting point. These three sleeves were only partially filled with water when they were several times in stagnation temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius, and they are also stuck to the steel sheet, but now we see that only their upper part is stuck to the sheet because the bottom of these three sleeves was filled with water during those stagnations. We understand that further operation of these sleeves is also impossible, and for example, here we see a big hole. 
It is interesting that the top sleeve less damaged than others. And now we see that it is still watertight because it has no damage. Except for a small hole here. Let's look at the results of this testing when my solar collector had this position during two months, under transparent polyethylene film, without water circulation, but its sleeves were filled with water. Then the collector had this position for another four months, and its sleeves were filled with water too. Thus, the collector was in stagnation temperature between 90 and 100 degrees Celsius several dozen times, and after that I decided to take a look at its condition which is now shown to you. So, four of the five polymer sleeves were in good condition. But this sleeve had this hole, and if you understand the causes of this hole, you can describe them in the comments. However these sleeves are made of 100 micron low density polyethylene, and I recommend an increase in the thickness of the polymer and use of high density polyethylene or other heat resistant polymer. Now I am showing that the expanded polystyrene is still in good condition, but polyurethane foam became brown and noticeably degraded, however it was the cheapest polyurethane foam from a hardware store. The pine battens have small signs of degradation, and we see that their tar has partially left the wood. Interestingly, the galvanized steel sheet has no signs of its corrosion, and it looks the same as six months ago. So, we understand that if we want to use selective coating or special glass cover which will increase the stagnation temperature, then we must use more heat-resistant materials for those polymer sleeves and the collector body. Of course, the phenomenon of stagnation of this type of solar collectors has not been studied by me well enough, and therefore my predictions are not indisputable facts, however it is possible that large solar stations can avoid situations when the circulation of water through their collectors stops during sunny hours, and this leads to their stagnation, and therefore large solar stations may try to use cheap materials for their collectors instead of expensive heat-resistant materials. In addition, I think that boiling residual water in the sleeves helps to avoid the increase in temperature of various parts of the collector higher than 120 degrees Celsius even in cases of using selective coating and other technical solutions which increase the efficiency of solar collectors. It is also interesting that such almost vertical position of solar collectors avoids high stagnation temperatures in summer, and we know that this position increases the heat production of collectors in winter but reduces their summer heat production. So, the minimum version of my solar collector is covered with ordinary cheap glass sheets with a thickness of 4 mm, but maybe we should think about choosing a different glass thickness to find the best compromise between cost, weight and durability. Now I show the primitive supports of my glass sheets, and these little cheap steel nails have been operating for 4 months without problems. This is a cheap cord from a hardware store at a price of 40 cents for every meter of double cord, and it seals the edges of the glass sheets. And now I show an interesting phenomenon when the high temperature leads to the fact that the cord sticks to the glass. We see that the top of my glass sheets is not fixed, and the weight of the glass is sufficient to counteract strong winds. This upper wall of the collector protects against penetration of rainwater under the glass. Such walls should be at the edges of collector rows, and they also have this cord for the ceiling. We see that this solar collector has four glass sheets, and the joints of the adjacent sheets do not have any seals, but the edges of adjacent glass sheets are close to each other. And it is interesting that this primitive type of the joints is impenetrable for rainwater, and therefore we do not see any dirty marks on the steel sheet under the joints. However I did not have time to make long term testing of these primitive joints in winter, and maybe they will be leaky for water which is formed due to melting snow. This is an alternative to those primitive joints. 
but obviously, it should be a transparent polymer with a lifetime of at least several years. Now I'm showing my mistake when a large weight of the glass sheets formed this wide gap for three months, and therefore this glass sheet noticeably sank down, and now this cord is outside the glass sheet. And we understand that this lower wall of the collector should be fixed more securely. This upper wall is also very important, and we have to pay attention to the spin of the upper part of the collector. Although we see that the lower part of the collector has no bend. That bend formed due to the weight of approximately 20 liters of water inside the sleeves during 1500 hours of this position of my collector and 3000 more hours of this position, and the upper wall of the collector must resist this bend. However we see that my upper wall makes it bad, and therefore we must change its design or its fixation to the collector. So, I remind you that once I made this old video which described this relative of our solar collector, but this collector uses transparent polyethylene film instead of those glass sheets. That old video described several topics in more detail, including the design of collector body and also it described problems which can prevent us from reaching this target. In addition, that old video described the maintenance of the collectors and possibility of replacing the polymer sleeves, and it described the features of connecting the collectors to pumps and water tanks, including features of operation of the collectors during frosts if we want the water does not freeze inside the polymer sleeves at night, but automatically leaves the sleeves after the sun disappeared.